Joining us live in studio, Anna van der independent criminology expert, and Richard Mababolo, pop crew spokesperson. Thanks to both of you for joining us. Anna, we'll just start here in studio for uh, our viewers who may have missed the video. If you can talk us through the sequence of events and what you make out of it with your uh, criminal, criminology expertise. Uh, I'll just ask our uh, technical director to press uh, the video. All right, so what, what is happening at the moment? We can see the police obviously um, standing behind each other and the uh, policemen in uh, private clothing, on civilian clothing, they seem to be all part of the same team. Uh, talk us through the rest. Yes, so one can see that they're busy with an operation and what happens in a case like that is that the, the adrenaline levels are very high and they, you know, it's, it's a life-threatening situation for them as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, yeah, one can see that that is definitely a tampering that happens. Uh, but with the, when that we started with the video, one can see that I think the initial action was uh, it points to a, actually an accident, yeah, a mistake. And uh, but here it is not a mistake. We, the, one can clearly see it is actually tampering with you know trying to move the body. And uh, I think um, that the police are trying to protect uh, the, the um, colleague. All right, let's just get a, a response from Mr. Richard uh, Mamabola, who is the Pop Crew spokesperson. Richard, thanks so much for joining us. We have a criminology expert in studio, Anna van der Woven, who just uh, in interpreted the video that has uh, gone viral. Uh, and, and she suggests that this may have been a cover-up when it comes to tampering with the crime scene and not the initial action uh, of the policeman in question. What is your well, response? Well, we want to firstly send condolences to the family of uh, Mr. Tladi, who unfortunately passed away in this incident. But uh, as pop crew, we, we, we will obviously await further investigation findings uh, uh, as had been interpreted by IPID, uh, which will provide a conclusive outcome. We believe that uh, and we can't speculate uh, on the matter at the moment as we're interested in the conclusive findings. Uh, but again, we think uh, such uh, eventualities will obviously when concluded, lead to outcomes which will point out to some of the uh, underlying challenges which we believe would uh, uh, obviously form a basis for uh, the Ministerial Transformation Task Team, which would obviously be looking into issues around training of police officers and, of course, uh, all other conditions that might obviously uh, have a negative effect within the police system. All right, Richard, this, just stay on the line. Let's get a response from Anna. You were saying in that kind of uh, environment that there is obviously high adrenaline and That's tension right. and, and yes. potential fear yes. of, of uh, danger to yourself. That, that is correct, yes. That, that mistakes can happen. But does yes. that not speak to the inadequate level of training perhaps for the police that if you don't have a clear shot, in other words, if there's an obstruction in front of you yes. that is not necessarily the intended target, that yes. you would hold fire? Yes. I think I think it points to that, that uh, they need uh, better training because uh, this was an accident. I think it happened so fast, but uh, I think with more training in, in, a, in a stressful situation, one can learn not, they can learn to hold the fire and make sure that, you know, it's safe to fire back. Mm. Uh, Richard, what about the trust relations between IPID, the uh, watchdog of the police, uh, in that they've already released a statement on record that suggests that uh, the proper procedure was not followed since the 12th uh, of January when this fateful incident happened, that there seems to be a cover-up from the South African Police Service in this incident, and uh, that you know the, the harshest penalty uh, will be afforded to those implicated. Look, I think there are lessons to be learned from uh, what happened. Uh, uh, but again, for us, uh, the most important thing would be that, as I've said, that uh, uh, whatever outcomes that are made uh, when IP concludes their their investigations will obviously uh, point to looking into measures that can be taken in the future to avoid such incidents uh, where, uh, for example, there might be such uh, uh, well uh, mistakes committed. Uh, we believe that through that, then there could be better mechanisms that are ensured, ensuring that uh, we look into how uh, policing, especially the training part, uh, is actually uh, ensured that uh, members do not find themselves in such a situation again. So everything that would uh, be happening from now on uh, would be obviously be a lesson to ensuring that uh, there are improvements in this regard. 
And you at home can also share your views on 011-542-2186 or you can join us on social media. That's at ANN7 TV or ANN7 TV. On Facebook, we have Richard Mamabolo. He is the Pop Crew spokesperson. And Anna van der Hoeven is an independent criminology uh, expert reflecting on the Katle Hong police shooting. That seems like a cover-up. It is early days and a life has been uh, sadly lost, that of Constable Tladi. Richard, just with the training, I mean, it's very little comfort for a family who now has to, to make arrangements to bury a loved one uh, and under very suspicious circumstances that the processes in, in themselves, they were flawed. From the get-go, when an incident like this happens, you would then follow, you know, the, the, the proper procedures by calling the police, you know, have a statement taken, etc. But it, we, we see clearly that there has been tempering of uh, the, the crime scene, which will, in fact, also impact on uh, the, the level of prosecution. What is your reaction to this? Look, our reaction is still that uh, we will obviously await uh, the investigations that are uh, made by, by, by the APID, which I think will obviously provide a conclusive outcome. So we cannot comment on that until, of course, uh, the report has come out from the APID itself. Yeah. Just stay on the line for me, Richard. And just the level of training as well when it comes to ballistics. There had been reports in, uh, in recent memory where police had either uh, mistaken identity. There was a lady who was uh, ambushed literally when she was driving home with her children because the car had been suspected to be that of potential robbers or suspects that were on um, the most wanted list. There was also an incident of... Um, uh, one musician who was who was also falsely identified as a robber. So when it comes to ballistics training and high intense environments, do you think that uh, uh, the, the training is adequate? It doesn't seem like that. So I think they should uh, um, uh, they should uh, improve on that matter. Mm. It's very urgent and and necessary because uh, I mean when lives are lost, you can't. So I made a mistake and. You know, we can't revive people who are dead. So it's very, very important that they get the right training to, to um, avoid such uh, fatal mistakes. Yeah, just, just speaking to your members as well, Richard, what, what is the sense uh, in terms of, you know, because obviously this would impact on the morale. There's now unnecessary scrutiny on the uh, police service based on this incident, over and above the fact that there seems to be a cover-up operation as well. What is the sense from your members regarding this particular unfortunate incident? Hi, Richard. All right, I think we've, we've lost Richard there. But, but what do you think the impact with this, uh, would, uh, uh, this would have on the psychology and even the morale of the police, you know, because now there is further scrutiny and also suspicion around what's going on. But that's why they try to cover up. They immediately, you know, the, uh, I think the first incident was um, when the person was shot. There was no intention. There was no intent. It was an accident. But then the police realized that there's a problem now. And, and uh, they panicked, and then they start making mistakes. So um, I think it's important in the training also to learn uh, not to act in a state of panic, but to, to, to be more rational and to take the right decisions in a time of crisis. Hmm. And, and what the liability but, as well on the, what would now be the accomplice in the, in yes. the you know, accessory yes to uh, the tampering of the crime scene, yes. that they, they, they would have to be equal liability to those who assisted yes. in clearing up the crime scene. Yes. Is yes. there any rational explanation that the police could give in the sense as to why the body, or, or perhaps it, it was a case of emergency trying yes. to get him to a hospital, but why the firearm was moved? What needs to happen yeah. in a crime scene yeah. before any movement is, is, there is made? Are, is, there are many <coughs> examples we would see that the police didn't act correctly and actually uh, either um, destroyed evidence, very vital evidence, or make, because they make mistakes and that uh, a, a, a certain uh, crime scene could not have been analyzed properly or, you know, that the evidence wasn't there anymore or, or being tampered with. So it's very important. I think one must start with the training. Uh, but I, I think it has a very bad inf um, effect on the police when they always just get um, uh, criticism 
and, and they really risk their lives in a situation like this. Yeah. Richard, uh, I believe you're back on the line. Thanks again for joining us. I was just asking about the morale since this incident surfaced online uh, with the police being further under scrutiny and uh, with a possible another cloud of, of suspicion over the police because of, uh, of what seems to be um, tampering of the crime scene and trying to hide uh, the evidence. Mm. The morale of police has been low for quite a, a long time already. It's not something that is new. And of course, you know, uh, every time when waking up and going to work under such conditions, uh, obviously police would not be feeling, uh, would obviously be feeling nervous. So we, we, we therefore also want to say that uh, we think that, uh, you know, part of the, the reasons why there was an establishment of a transformation task team, which of course will review even training methods, would be to ensure that uh, such uh, well, police are taken through such a uh, well, the, the, how they're supposed to react under such conditions, and of course, the uh, broader uh, uh, conditions as well, which uh, we have seen in the past where police have been accused of uh, wrongdoing. Uh, we think that uh, uh, this will obviously be a lesson to be learned in ensuring that uh, they, when they approach certain things, uh, they obviously take into consideration the safety of uh, 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 all of them, of course. All right, but is the protocol? universal in how a crime scene is treated even if it involves one of your own or are there different sets of rules that if a police officer were to be injured uh, assumedly in this in this regard accidentally that the rules do not apply no look uh, the rules will always apply there are measures of course that uh, would then be expected to be taken uh, uh, and of course uh, at times uh, uh, for example within that video it could have been that uh, they had wanted to obviously uh, ensure that uh, uh, medical attention is brought forth you know so you never know that is why we obviously say that uh, let us wait uh, the investigations and, and make a determination thereafter Okay, but Anna, the fact that there's absence of previous shots being fired, at least there's no evidence thereof, uh, are you absolutely convinced that this on the surface appears to have been uh, an unfortunate accident? Yes, it seems like that. We don't have uh, facts, uh, correct facts, yet, but it seems like it was an accident, but uh, what happened afterwards was intentional was mm. not uh, well, we were even asking about the liability of the three other police officers yeah. on the scene whether of course once the investigation is concluded and the uh, requisite uh, evidence has been gathered and prosecution is is completed that they may be equally liable for yes. for this particular yes. particular incident i agree i agree right yeah mm. so so richard you keep saying and hovering on the issue around training but I mean, what kind of training is there at the moment? Are there gaps you feel or bottlenecks or uh, just simply lack of adequate training for, for police? Just take us into your confidence to give us a sense that ballistic training is, is up to scratch. We, well, with, with regards to training, we've always said as Pokro that we need continuous training. It's not only about uh, police officers uh, getting into the force and being trained once, but we think that uh, at least on a yearly basis there should be improvement of skills in all regards, not only in terms of ballistics, but in all regards. We feel that that will obviously ensure that uh, uh, police are always at the peak of their game in terms of uh, addressing, uh, uh, well, or rather confronting such conditions. Do you think there's just the aggrieved family that uh, they can take legal action just if the, the results or the outcome is not satisfactory in explaining exactly how this incident took place, considering that there already seems to be a cover-up? Look, I think that that is one thing that will obviously be determined by the investigations. And of course, it's not only a, a, a pain for the family, it's a pain for the police force as a whole, you know, uh, because we've been losing a lot of police officers over the years. And this is uh, this cannot be excluded from that as well. So it's something that we are all aggrieved about. Yeah. Okay, Richard, stay on the line. Anna, just the relationship between the police and society as well. When we hear a member of a pop crew... Uh, the police union saying that they themselves have always requested for uh, refresher courses, more advanced training yes. on an annual basis, and it's not happening. Yes. What, what does that say to, to our psyche? Yes, it seems as if it, uh, it's not treated as a priority. And I definitely think it's very important uh, to, to, for the government to pay attention to this. Mm. 
Yeah. But, but, but obviously, why would a police officer be vetted and said, you know, in their yeah. assessment or evaluation that you have passed the most critical of exams to ensure that psychologically, physically and otherwise you are capable of handling the high intense, stressful environment that you'll be working on? Yeah. And uh, that's it's very important that uh, they have, they go through the right tests to see if they can actually um, uh, take the right actions under a stress, very stressful situation. Mm. And I think they, 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 there may be gaps there. Okay. And, and, and the problem is also that they, 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 they're underpaid. Mm. Uh, it, it also plays a part. All right, so let's uh, speak to Acting Police Commissioner Komoto Patlane. Rep Patlane, thanks so much for your time. Uh, we earlier uh, heard from uh, IPED spokesperson Mr. Damini that it does appear to have been a, a cover-up by police. Investigations are still in its early stages. But what do you think went wrong in this particular incident? Thanks, Cindy. First, uh, let me place it on record that the uh, that which had happened that resulted in the unfortunate killing of uh, Constable Tsepo is unfortunate and regrettable. And we will, as we did this afternoon, uh, continue to convey our deepest condolences to the colleagues, the family, and the loved ones. Um, this particular instance, we cannot talk of we cannot generalize and say police cover up. When it was reported initially, even to us as management, it was reported as a member who was killed in the execution of his duty uh, during a robbery. That was Thursday. Uh, it is only on Friday, Saturday, that the video surfaced, the CCTV recordings surfaced, which we then obtained from the place where the incident happened. Following that, uh, we started a process to look into uh, investigating uh, that which has happened, and we are very clear that the crime scene has been tampered with. Everything that happened there will not be in line with our protocol, uh, the crime scene management protocol or procedures. Uh, it is something that uh, warrants uh, uh, action. Uh, it will be investigated, and once uh, there is an, an outcome, those that are responsible will be dealt with accordingly. All right, Richard, just your response to it, because uh, from Pop Crew, uh, Mr. Patlane, their argument is that it was so urgent that they needed to get the fallen police officer to emergency services as quickly as possible, and therefore the rationale or the justification for the alleged tampering of uh, the crime scene. Look, we, we, we said that it could have been the case that uh, perhaps uh, there was a need for medical attention. And of course, I think uh, uh, Mr. Patani, as the acting national commissioner, would know more about uh, the protocols that need to be followed. So we're not in dispute of that. But uh, as we said before, that uh, we think it's important that we await further investigations and the findings will be conclusive. Uh, and only on the basis of this conclusive outcome will we be, then be able to to really speak to the issue further. Commissioner Patlane, you seem to be very convinced. You speak with the conviction that there seems to be a, or rather that the crime scene had been tampered with. Uh, is there any other explanation that the uh, uh, police officers in the video can explain why they had removed critical evidence? There are far too many questions that are still to be answered and only a thorough investigation. Uh, will answer those questions. Uh, one of the questions, for example, is who is that person in red? He's definitely not a police person. And uh, if we were to suggest that uh, we have moved the, the body of uh, the, the officer, uh, why would we have uh, removed the, the firearms from the positions uh, uh, that they were located, including the cartridges. Uh, and uh, you saw uh, a firearm that was taken into the back of one uh, of, of, of the officers, uh, which, is, which is not according to protocol, because by so doing, uh, you would have already uh, tampered with uh, whatever has got evidential value on, 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 that, on that firearm. 
And, and can you confirm that the uh, laboring of uh, the lack of uh, training or adequate training, as we heard from Pop Crew, that this can excuse the action that these officers took in this particular case? Yeah, we can't um, always refer to the lack of training as if uh, uh, this was the case here. Uh, as, I, as I just asked you, who is the person in red? He's not the police person. So why must police training become an issue in, in this regard? These members are well trained. Uh, what, what we must do is to give ourselves a chance and have this matter thoroughly investigated so that all those questions can be answered. If you noted on the video, uh, the, the, of the person who was shot, uh, unfortunately, Constable Cladi in this case moved into the firing line of the one who was behind him. Uh, so as to whether it was deliberate or it was uh, an accidental shot, only the outcome of the investigation will dictate and uh, we will take action uh, informed by, by that outcome. All right, thank you.